All right, we're going to get started. Um, we're, doing, we're doing truth testers. We come together this morning again to test the truth, to experiment with reality so that we can come to have our own experience, right? We want to have an experience with the truth. And this morning we're going to be talking about with, with or without water, right? With or without water. We want you to be the judge. You decide, is human life actually possible without the presence of water? I mean, just think about it. We drink water in some form or another every single day, right? Is that right? It's the most precious natural resource uh, that we have on earth, right? There you go. But besides drinking water, what else does water do for us and for our planet, right? That's the question you've got to ask. One question about water. Does it really regulate Earth's temperature to make life on Earth possible, right? Complex life possible because of water on Earth? That's one of the questions. Think about this for a minute, right? With me. It's a proven fact that the incredible chemical qualities of liquid water make it perfectly suitable for carbon-based life on Earth. That's important. For life to exist on Earth, liquid water's unbelievable ability to absorb heat from the sun, a process that's vital for regulating the Earth's temperature, is absolutely, unequivocally, emphatically necessary, guys. Now let's take a look. I want us to take a look now at this clip that I prepared for you from the privileged planet, The Search for Purpose in the Universe. Let's check it out. For Gonzales and other astrobiologists, these factors required for the Earth's habitability became the focus of extensive research. We demonstrated in dozens of different ways the laws of physics and chemistry that pertain in a laboratory anywhere on Earth apply anywhere in the solar system, apply anywhere in the galaxy, and in many cases out to the most distant galaxies that we can see. There are indeed unchanging physical laws in the universe that apply to the entirety of the universe, that they're not localized to one place. This consistency in the laws of physics and chemistry has led many researchers to conclude that the factors necessary for complex life on Earth are also the best parameters in the search for habitable planets elsewhere in the universe. Most serious discussions about these factors begin with the same prerequisite, liquid water. All the searches that are being done for life elsewhere, their starting position is a terrestrial class planet with water. It is now widely recognized that the chemical properties of water are exquisitely suited for carbon-based life. These properties include water's ability to dissolve and transport the chemical nutrients vital to all living organisms, and its unmatched capacity to absorb heat from the sun, a process critical for regulating the Earth's surface temperature. In liquid form, water is an extraordinary substance and its existence hinges upon another factor essential to complex life, a planet's distance from its home star. It's like what they say in real estate, location, location, location. A habitable planet lives in what we call the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. And when I say just right, I mean just right for water. Liquid water really helps define the habitable zone. If it's too hot, again, the water just boils away, you just can't get condensed water. It's too cold, as in Mars today, it freezes out. Within our solar system, the habitable zone is relatively narrow, beginning well outside the orbit of Venus and ending short of the orbit of Mars. If the Earth were just 5% closer to the Sun, it would be subject to the same fate as Venus, a runaway greenhouse effect with temperatures rising to nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Conversely, if the Earth were 20% farther from its home star, carbon dioxide clouds would form in its upper atmosphere, initiating the cycle of ice and cold that has sterilized Mars. The presence of liquid water is a necessary condition for life. 
but it's not a sufficient condition. After all, there may be liquid water under the frozen surfaces of Mars and Jupiter's moon Europa, but there's very little chance that complex life exists in either of these places. You see, contrary to what the Copernican... Did you know that water is designed with an unusual heat holding, prop heat holding properties? It, this, what this does is it keeps the Earth's temperature comfortable and makes it uh, makes uh, complex life possible. And not only does it quench our thirst, but water also protects Earth from outside forces. For instance, did you know this? Did you guys know that the moon with no water or no air has a daytime temperature of how hot? Two hundred degrees Fahrenheit. You better take some really good sunblock with you right there. And uh, if that's not hot enough for you in the daytime, uh, you'll be cooled off at night because with no water, moon's temperature drops to a negative 200 degrees below zero at nighttime. Huh. That's pretty cold. You better take a parka with you. Um, all right, so let's check this out. Uh, but the difference between the moon and any other planet uh, and Earth is water. Water absorbs large amounts of heat. And here's a little chart, a comparison chart that I worked up for us on our, on our board here. These are the substances. These are their heat capacities. Look at acetone, C3H6O. It has a .506. Uh, doesn't even get to one. Ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH, .54 uh, heat, heat capacity. What about liquid mercury? What is its capacity to absorb heat? Hg, it absorbs at 0 .033. What about sulfuric acid? How is its heat absorbing capacity? Sulfuric acid's H2SO4, and it only has a 0.27 ability to absorb heat or have heat capacity. And then there's our very wonderful liquid water. And we all know water is H2O. And look at this. Look at water. 1.0. It has the largest, look at our substances on the board. It has the largest ability to absorb heat. So water with this, with this value of 1.0 has this very large capacity to absorb heat, right? The physical makeup of water is by no accident. It was made perfectly and it was designed by our Creator to, as part of the uh, plan to make human life possible on earth, right? Water is so important. And you know what? In fact, water um, is the most often mentioned natural resource in the Bible. Did you guys know that? You know what? People living in New Testament times, they would have totally understood the importance of water to their daily existence. They would have understood how precious a resource that water really was. Did you also know that the Bible uses water to represent the Holy Spirit? And that the Bible, did you know the Bible uses water to represent uh, salvation and new life? You can find that in John chapter 7, verse 38 and verses 39. All right, I'd like us also to do another little thing. Let's consider some other important comparisons that the Bible uses between water and new life, right? Or eternal life. Consider this. Consider this in comparison with water and salvation. Both are priceless, yet both are free, right? Water and salvation, both are available to everyone, right? All right. And water, H2O, liquid water, is essential for physical life. And living water is also essential for eternal life. Even though the gift of salvation goes way beyond just a refreshing drink of water, right? But that